They can walk like humans or four-legged animals. They can slither like snakes and yes, even crawl like insects like Hexa here. Over just the past couple years, robots have exploded, sometimes literally, but they're showing up all over the place and taking an astounding range of forms, which roboticists have largely borrowed from nature. We're talking salamanders and even octopuses, because it turns out nature kinda knows what it's doing when it comes to locomotion. So come with us on a journey through a fascinating world of biomimicry, a cornerstone of modern robotics. Nothing will bite, I promise. Evolution is the greatest creative force the world has ever known. It's helped animals conquer land, sea, and air with a galaxy of body forms. So it's here where roboticists often look for inspiration. First up, Snakebot. These robots are basically composed of about 16 individual motors or actuators, um, servo motors. And how they're actually arranged allows us to take on these, these three-dimensional shapes, which amongst other things allows me to do things like sidewind. So you can actually see the robot here is moving a lot like desert-dwelling sidewinding snakes. While Snakebot is decidedly serpentine, these researchers never set out to copy a snake muscle for muscle and bone for bone. They wanted its mobility. Snakes can climb and squeeze through tight spaces, and so can Snakebot. Copying a snake's physiology exactly would be both impossible and unnecessary. But what's special about Snakebot is it can actually pull off maneuvers like this that a real snake never could. It won't be jumping anytime soon, but Salto certainly is. This one-legged robot was inspired by a critter called the Bush Baby, which has a vertical leap of six feet. The Bush Baby uses something called super crouch posture, where it stores a bunch of energy and suddenly releases it. Same with Salto. But that's just the start of the challenge of not only jumping, but bounding off things. Salto is controlled by setting its orientation in the air based on where it is, how fast it's going, where we want it to be, and how fast we want it to be going. So in the air, it simply picks an orientation to land with. Once it lands, we detect contact, apply a little burst of energy to get it back off the ground, and then repeat. Moving rather more methodically is Microtug from Stanford. Inspired by the stickiness of gecko feet, this tiny wonder can pull 2,000 times its own weight. That's like you dragging 300,000 pounds. The secret is a whole bunch of tiny rubber hairs that stick the robot to the ground as a winch pulls the object. A group of them tethered together can even pull a car. But why crawl when you can fly? At Caltech, researchers have built a robot bat, which again, will not bite. It's got a skeleton of carbon fiber and wings made of silicone. The robot bat is another case where researchers didn't bother strictly copying an animal. These wings have nine joints instead of 40 you'd find in a bat. Natural selection crafted the bat over millennia, but roboticists took that design and simplified it. So taking inspiration from the physiology of animals is one thing, but what about replicating evolution itself? This is Diret. It's actually teaching itself to walk by falling down. It tries new gates and selects the ones that work best in a certain environment. Out here in the snow, it automatically adjusts to lower its center of gravity for more stability. Thus, it adapts to an environment like a species might in nature. So robots can mimic animals and even evolution, but they can also mimic collective behavior. Ants are great at two things, ruining picnics and working together to build their homes. Microbots collaborate like ants to build impressive structures like this lattice. Some robots deposit glue and others add rods. We can have robots that specialize in handling active components, you know, like resistors, LEDs. That means microbots could work together to build complex structures that are sturdier than what you'd get with 3D printing. And biomimicry can also help scientists better study and protect animals. Take this robotic fish from MIT. It swims by pumping water into two opposing chambers in the tail. Researchers remote control it not with radio waves, which don't work underwater, but with acoustic signals. One day the robot could go fully autonomous to blend into a coral reef. That could give scientists unprecedented insight into these ecosystems. And then there's Fembot. Yes, that's its actual name. It's a taxidermy bird stuck on some wheels. It's both hilarious and useful. Biologist Gail Patricelli uses it to spy on sage grouse, a species under threat. Over the last decade or so, they've been the focus of one of the biggest conservation efforts in U.S. history. This is what the robot looks like without its bird shell. 
The shape is a fiberglass mold of a body from an online taxidermy store. It's kind of got a crazy escaped rotisserie chicken um, with some sort of something s and going on in there. <laughs> Look when it's halfway built, but, um, but this is all elastic. This is nylons. I actually used a pair of Spanx that I ripped apart. Fembot is helping Patricelli better understand the sage grouse so she can better protect it. So from a robot bird to a robot snake to a robot, whatever this is, machines inspired by nature are making big strides.